Hey everyone, in this lesson we are going to go over a couple different scripting optimizations uh, that you can implement in your projects in order to increase performance, as with mobile games especially, performance is something you always need to keep in mind. So, the first thing we're going to look at is caching objects. Now, whenever you want to access an object inside of Unity, you might think that, oh, the gameObject.find function, I can just easily find an object that way, or get component. Um, here in this example, I'm finding the object ball and accessing the mesh renderer component to change the color to blue every single frame. Now, this is a very expensive line of code. And when I say expensive, I mean that it is using a lot of processing power and it takes quite a long time to run in terms of a function. And what we can do with this is actually cache the, uh, of the mesh renderer component of the ball instead of having to find the ball every frame and find the mesh renderer component every frame. So instead, what we can do is cache it. We can create a private variable for that ball mesh renderer and in the awake function, that is where we will call the uh, gameObject.find function to find the ball object and get the mesh render component. What this would do is greatly reduce uh, the amount of time it takes to run the update function, as we are only calling the gameObject.find and get component for the ball once uh, in the whole game. Whereas before, we were calling it probably around 60 times a second if you're at 60 FPS on a mobile. Um, this is just a lot easier, and this is really what you should be doing if you do have um, these sort of large and expensive functions being called quite regularly. Here's also a list of all the other sort of functions that you should really cache if you're calling them every frame, or if you're calling them quite often. Uh, you got game object defined, and then you also have game object dot find object of type. Now this is probably one of the most expensive ones, as what this is doing is like game object dot find game object game object dot find is looking through the scene for a specific object with a specific name. Well, what game object dot find object of type is doing is doing the exact same thing as find, but for each of those objects, it is actually um, pretty much calling the get component function. So it's looking through every object and every component for a specific one, and that is actually quite a performance hitting function that you should only really be calling uh, once for an object uh, when it's been initialized. Then there is find object with tag, which looks through all the objects for a specific tag. Uh, this is actually what the main the camera does, the camera.main. Whenever you call camera.main, this is behind the scenes what it is calling. Um, so when you think of that, it's it's really something that you shouldn't really be calling every frame as well. Uh, so we've get component and of course camera.main. Something else you should also keep in mind when creating functions inside of Unity is reducing the amount of times you need to call them. Sometimes you'll have a really expensive function like something to do with pathfinding or calculating something quite large. Uh, in this case, you don't necessarily have to always do it every single frame. If it's something that is not required every single frame, then you can actually reduce that quite a bit. For example, if it is a pathfinding function, uh, you don't need to constantly be updating uh, the agent's path every single frame. Instead, you can do it every, every 0.2 seconds like we see on the right. And what we're doing is reducing the amount of times we call this function from 60 times a second, if you're running at 60 FPS, right down to 5 times a second. And all we're doing is creating a private variable called last call time, and we are just checking to see that if our current time, take away the last time we called this function, is greater than or equal to 0.2 seconds, or really whatever frequency you want, then we are calling the expensive function. And of course, then in the expensive function, you then want to uh, set the last call time uh, to equal the current time dot time, so that it is then reset. And it keeps on going around to call that expensive function every 0.2 seconds. As if it is something to do with pathfinding, it is not really that noticeable a difference from every frame to five times a second. Finally, here's just a list of other optimizations that you really should keep in mind when creating projects in Unity, and especially in mobile. Um, debug.log is a one that pops up quite a lot. You'll constantly be using this to debug stuff and test various functions out, but when you actually release your game, you don't need these, as the player as the player at the end of the day will never see these debug.logs. And what they are, they're actually quite expensive. Whenever you call one, um, there's quite a lot that goes on behind the scenes, and if you actually look at the profiler when calling debug.log, it's actually pretty expensive. Uh, also reducing the frequency of raycasts. Try and avoid calling raycasts every single frame if you have to. Um, you could use something similar to this uh, function call optimization where you call it every 0.2 seconds. But yeah, raycasts and raycast hits are pretty expensive as well. 
Uh, also, in update, try and avoid using loops. Try and avoid looping through stuff every single frame, as it does have to loop through every single element inside that array or however many times you're calling that loop in the update function. So, yeah, just try and avoid that. And also, if you're instantiating a lot of objects that are the same and they're being destroyed, such as bullets or particle effects, you can actually imp implement object pooling. And what this does is, when an object is created, it's not actually instantiating it, it's actually um, taking it from a pool, which you actually instantiate a bunch of the same object at the start of the game, and you sort of reuse them. So instead of destroying them at the end, you just disable them, and when you want a new one, the pool will look through, see if they have one available, re-enable it, or if there's not one available, it will create a new one. Uh, this is known as object pooling. There are of a large amount of different ways to do it. You can go from very simple options to very complex options. Um, but object pooling is something you do need to keep in mind if you're creating a game that uses bullets or lots of particle effects. So yeah, that's about it. I'll see you all in the next lesson.